Hello FPL managers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the top 5 players in midfield who I think you should be starting the season with or at least putting them in your first drafts. So before we get into that top 5 we're going to be looking at some honourable mentions. First of all I'm going to talk about Richarlison, 8 million at Everton. So we are starting off in a bit of a hot topic here, but I'm suggesting the Brazilian Evertonian, who I think has been vastly overlooked, mostly due to that horrendous blank run of form from last season. However, in FPL, a tip that I will always suggest is that if you hold a grudge, then the only person to suffer will be you. I held grudges last season against Sane and Sterling because they really screwed me over at the start of last season, and I heavily paid the price. Nobody else did. Each season should see a new player start a clean slate and this season Richarlison gets another chance from me. The reasons why are quite simple. Richarlison starts seasons on fire. The only problem with him seems to be around November, December when Richarlison and funnily enough at the same time his manager Marco Silva seem to just completely fizzle out. It happened when they were both at Watford and it happened as well when they were at Everton. But with 135 points, 13 goals, 3 assists and 11 clean sheets and the most shots inside the opposition box of any Everton player, Richarlison is posting some good scores. In terms of Everton as a team, they have a fantastic opening fixture set with only 2 red fixtures at home in the first 14 game weeks. On top of that, they started to look really secure at the back last season with 8 clean sheets coming in the final third of the season. So with a stronger defence and no real alternative to replace Richarlison against teams Everton should be beating quite comfortably means that Richarlison again could start the season well. And finally, a keynote to remember, a lot of people look at an entire season's stats instead of when they're in form or not in form. It's not often to have a player in your side for the entire season, more so if they are an attacking player, so a midfielder or a forward. We make transfers and changes and formation changes all of the time. So you are looking at players to start the season well with until... Uh, either form dips or when you're using that first wild card to make mass changes to your side and for me Richarlison is a good starting FPL player and when his form does dip that's when you take him out because Richarlison in the last few years has been one of the best FPL players at the start of a season. It is clear to note as well that Sigerson is an excellent choice at 8 million with 13 goals and 6 assists coming last campaign and choosing either of these two players would be a good choice. However, I feel that with Richarlison's attacking threat and his blistering starts to his previous seasons makes him just slightly edge out Siggy for me. And my final quick honourable mentions are going towards Perez and Tielemans, 6.5 million both at Leicester. So Perez last term was a forward at Newcastle and he bagged 12 goals and 2 assists. Now at a better Leicester City side, perhaps playing up front with Vardy, yet being a midfielder in FPL could see a good point haul. Also at Leicester City, they fought off stiff competition to re-sign Tielemans on a permanent deal, who himself declared his intent to go back to Leicester and play for Brendan Rodgers, despite offers elsewhere. Three goals and five assists in only 13 appearances since he joined in January is very impressive from the 22 year old Belgium. Leicester don't have the easiest start to the season however the Foxes usually thrive on tough games and an improvement in the team since Rodgers took charge plus a few signings could make the 6.5 million pair at Leicester a good shout to start the season with. So coming in at number 5, we're looking at Ryan Fraser, 7.5 million at Bournemouth. So the small Scotsman has received a hefty price rise from 5.5 million to 7.5 million, but many have not argued against it or have even been put off by it, with 21.5% choosing to select Fraser once again. 181 points from 7 goals and 14 assists made Fraser a must-have cheap midfielder last season. Even though he went through a cold patch without Wilson up front, the the winger posted excellent stats and the left side of the 18 yard box on his heat map is absolutely covered in red. So he is extremely attacking. Last season also saw Fraser finish just behind Hazard and Sterling in terms of assists, yet for a much cheaper price than those two players. Fraser also had a good balance between home and away, scoring 95 points at home and 86 points away, meaning that if you're looking at fixtures, you don't have to worry about where he's going to play, only who Bournemouth 
Bournemouth are playing against. Fraser was also third in terms of key passes and best in terms of creating big chances with 28 big chances created last season. He is often in drafts I've seen alongside uh, other players from this video and with good reason. Finishing fifth last season for midfielders, there are high hopes that the 25-year-old Aberdeen lad can continue improving and with Bournemouth starting the season against two of the three promoted sides from the last campaign, it's easy to see why at least the start of the season might have the assist machine in your squad. It, I think it would be a smart move, even more so if Wilson is fit and playing as well. At number four, we're going to be looking at Wilfred Zaha, 7 million at Crystal Palace. So last season, he was a 7 million striker. Now he's a 7 million midfielder who still plays as Palace's main attacking threat. 143 points from 10 goals and 11 assists as a midfielder last season would have given him a lot more points alongside Palace's 11 clean sheets had Zaha been a midfielder last season and not a forward. While talks of him moving to Arsenal have kind of stalled, being at Palace or Arsenal for me is fine for this player, but I would actually prefer that he stays at Crystal Palace. At Arsenal, maybe he's going to get rotated, maybe he's going to be forced to always play out wide, or maybe part of a front three with Aubameyang and Lacazette. All is speculation, and speculation is something that is dangerous in FPL. If he is at Palace, he will not only play, but he will also be the key attacking player within that side. Almost 1,000 touches in the opposition final third also over 500 passes received in that same area 237 penalty area touches and 55 goal attempts within the box means that for 7 milli you are getting a bargain player who could go on to grab you at least 150 points or more especially now he's changed from a forward to a midfielder in at number three, and it's a little bit of a cheeky one because we're looking at cheaper Manchester City options. Kevin De Bruyne for 9.5 million and Bernardo Silva for eight. So a lot of people are struggling more this year to get in top players, especially in midfield and up front. Defenders are more important and can no longer be your cheap option. Therefore, defenders in the game are becoming more expensive whilst becoming more essential. Kane's price dropped as well has alerted a lot more people, as has the price rises of the likes of Mane and Fraser. This means that teams may not have the ability to have as many premium midfielders as they did before. Yet people need City and Liverpool players in their side. So for me, if one has to go between Sterling and Salah, I'd lose Sterling because there are more other options at City worth looking at. In the Liverpool midfield, there's only Salah and Mane worth looking at in terms of FPL. But with Manchester City, you have a lot more of a selection. So here's why I think Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva could replace Sterling if you need to save that money. So first up, Kevin De Bruyne. If he can prove his fitness over pre-season at 9.5 million, he is a steal, giving his assisting ability. Last season, only saw 11 starts, but he has still posted two goals and two assists on on the board. So for Kevin De Bruyne, look before last season to when he was fit, the two seasons prior. Eight goals and 18 assists in the 17 to 18 campaign, and six goals and 21 assists in the season before that. Now, we're not looking at a player hoping to recapture old form and glory like perhaps Alexis Sanchez at Manchester United. We are purely looking at a player who had one bad season filled with injuries because even when he played, he still looked dangerous. With Fernandinho back in the side and either alongside or having Rodri as cover, Kevin De Bruyne uh, will have that free-roaming, creative, playmaking midfielder license where he can focus more on carving out chances without having the worry of defending too much. As mentioned, keep a really close eye on him for pre-season and if he's playing and not taking any knocks or going off injured, uh, injured during any of these games because if he has a clean pre-season, he is definitely going to be in my side. The second City option I'm going to talk about is Bilva, Bernardo Silva. Why? First is Price. He is seven. Uh, sorry, he is eight million, and Pep has not hidden his delight in the little Portuguese magician. He played the third most of any City player behind Laporte and Edison showing that he's less prone to Pep's rotation. Also, he is extremely versatile. Uh, last season saw him play as a winger on either side or somewhere in central or attacking midfield. Whilst this is good in terms of minutes for a Manchester City player, it can hinder a player's form in terms of FPL or even for himself. Bilva is a fantastic player. However, in terms of FPL, his 154 points, 7 goals and 8 assists aren't amazing for the minutes that he played. 
Whilst finishing as the 12th best midfielder, he played more or similar minutes than players like Sane, Richarlson, David Silva, Madison, Lucas Moura, uh, Wilfred Zaha, who was actually a forward last season, plus a few more. It's not also completely known what Bilva's role is going to be. Last season saw him having to drop into midfield to cover. Now City have cover for that position. Will Bilva now be just one of the wingers with Sterling? Or is he going to see his minutes dropped now that he'll only be needed up front? A position that he'll have to share with uh, Sterling, Sane, Mares. So for me... If he features heavily in preseason and still has Pep's privileged trust, then at 8 million you're getting an important Man City player that plays. But I expect that his minutes might actually be lower if you compare it to last season. As we head into the final two, of course they become a little bit more obvious. So in at number two for me, it's Raheem Sterling, Manchester City and 12 million. The second highest scorer of FPL last season. He's 1 million more expensive than he was last season, but 31 starts means that he is less of a worry for Pep's rotation system. But you cannot deny that 234 points, 17 goals and 15 assists, over 1,300 touches in the opposition final third, 298 touches in the opposition penalty area and 77 shots inside that penalty area as well. He also has a great pass completion percentage of 87% in the opposition half and 83% in the final third. All of this plus Manchester City's 17 clean sheets put Sterling as the king in waiting. He is arguably really going to be fighting again for on today's number one because he is that good. He is at Man City. They are the champions. He is rotated less, but he did only have 31 starts in a 38-game season. So the reason why he's number two for me is he still has that rotation option. I have captained him myself. I've held the grudge against him myself because he could miss a game where you triple captain him against a newly promoted side at home because he's getting a rest. So in at number one, yet again, it's Mohamed Salah, Liverpool, 12.5 million. The back-to-back -back FPL top-scoring king. Rarely rotated out with 37 starts last season. He's even 0.5 million cheaper than last year. 22 goals and 12 assists, so Salah is well spread as well between goals and assists. Also, 13 goals, 5 assists at home, 9 goals and 3 assists away means that he's even balanced with goals and assists and is balanced really between home and away. Easily the number one FPL player of the last two seasons and even with the highest price tag it's hard to ignore that back-to-back -back FPL champion status. Despite the occasional cold spell he comes good in the end and he finishes top of the pile. Whilst Mane is a great option with 22 goals and three assists and is in a way, between number one and number two, his huge price rise from 9.5 to 11.5 million has put people off. Also, Mane's away form isn't great either with just four goals and one assist in comparison to his 18 goals at home. Finally, Mane is all about goals, whereas I mentioned earlier, Saleh has that goals and assist balance as well as that home and away balance. So if you do need to save that one million, then look no further than Mane. But for me, Salah again is cream of the crop, the must-have FPL player of the 2019-2020 season. So that wraps up the top five midfielders who I think you should be looking at to start the season with. Coming up on the channel in the near future as well, we'll be looking at the top five forwards who I think will be good options to start the season with as well. Please remember that it's all up in the air at the minute. Anything could happen. We're still waiting to find out who's going to be our Jimenez or Fraser to start the season with. That's going to be that cheap option. These are just sort of the safe, boring options perhaps to start the season with. It's all opinion. And also, I would like to see different drafts. I've said this earlier in the video. I've seen so many drafts that are the same. Many people doing the same things. Try something different. There's no point in coming in the top 100,000 year in, year out. This is why I risked it and I flopped last season. You need to find points where other people don't. So if you're just having the same teams as everyone else, you're going to get the same points as everyone else. So have a couple of players that are different and hopefully you guys will start the season very well. So thanks for watching again, guys. Follow me on Twitter. Maybe leave a like and subscribe if you like the video. And as always, have a good one.